this lab, we keep our plant cell cultures. These are cell cultures that are derived from plants like this one here, which is Populus trigocarpa or cottonwood. This tree is the first tree with a sequence genome, which allows us to study the, the process of wood formation and look at the genes since they are available in databases. In our search, we collaborate with Umeå Plant Science Center. They produce transgenic trees. That is something that we don't do. Uh, so instead, we work with cell cultures. And uh, to study wood, that takes a long time because wood is a slow process. But by growing cell cultures, we can induce these cultures to produce wood-forming cells and that facilitates our studies. The, the course I am uh, teaching and organizing is biofiber resources and where we address how uh, plants produce and assemble fibers. The biomimetic idea is about understanding how nature does things in order to emulate at least some concepts. So if we, we, we need to understand how the plants make fibers. We are addressing very fundamental biological questions which uh, some of them people have been looking for answers for years. So that, that is very exciting. It's like uh, being a detective. You, you have a mystery and you have to solve it. And I found that, that very, very appealing. I, I, t I take those questions home every evening and, and think about it. What is going on? How is this working? Uh, so, and then when you come back to the lab and make some experiments and suddenly you get a, a small piece of answer, that is very, very exciting. So I think that, that what drives me is curiosity. We want to know how it works. I did my basic studies at the, agriculture, the Swedish Agricultural University, SLU, where uh, I did both my Bachelor of Science and my PhD, um, addressing questions of how plants regulate their genes, actually they, what we call gene expression, and how seeds mature and can become uh, tolerant to desiccation and, and uh, survive long periods of time. And later I went to California and uh, did a postdoc at UC Berkeley addressing questions of sexual reproduction in plants. And then when I came back, uh, after a while, I came to KTH and joined the Biomine to do research on wood formation. And since we are studying here very much, at least my own research addresses questions of how different genes regulate the formation of wood and the deposition and, and, and accumulation of cellulose during the wood formation process. My background studying gene regulation and gene function is very uh, appropriate. Besides using cell cultures, we also use whole plants in order to express genes that we study produce their gene products which are proteins and enzymes. So in principle what we do is that we use a soil bacterium called agrobacterium which carries the genes that we want to study and we infect the leaf by pressing the agrobacteria through small small pores that are in the lower side of the leaves. Then the agrobacteria come into the in, in, come inside the leaf and insert the genes that we want to study into the leaf and after some days we can harvest these leaves and extract the proteins and study either enzymatic function or for example we can look at the microscope to see their cellular localization which also tells us very much about their function so using this technique of agroinfiltration, which we recently mentioned and showed, we express our target proteins, the proteins that we are interested in, fused to GFP, 
and in the leaves and then we just cut the leaf and bring it here to the microscope and look for their localization. Using this approach we have discovered a very interesting protein which is very much expressed and accumulated during the process of cellulose biosynthesis during wood formation and we have shown that this protein is associated to a very interesting structure in the cell which is called microtubules and it has been long time known that microtubules are very important for cellulose biosynthesis so if you disrupt them or inhibit them in any way then cellulose biosynthesis cannot continue however it has never been known how it is what is the connection between the microtubules and cellulose biosynthesis so we think that maybe this protein can be uh, an important actor in this aspect. Microtubules are very interesting and fascinating structures, cellular structures. They are like tubular structures that have the capacity to grow and shrink continuously. And this process is very important for many processes inside the cell, but not only within the cell, also they affect the whole plant and they underlie, for example, the spiral growth of climbing plants, which is a process that fascinated Darwin when he was sick in his bed. He had climbing plants around him and he was studying how they were turning around, but I don't think he knew that about the existence of microtubules at that time. And spiral growth of plants is also very important for trees growing in windy areas that turn around in order to resist strong winds. This is called spiral growth of trees um, and it's also called spiral grain which is uh, an aspect of wood quality which is um, important.